Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be smelting down some real high grade black sand concentrate. Here's a look at these concentrates, and these are off one of our shaker tables from a customer, and he says they're they're full of silver um, and a little bit of gold. So uh, he sent me on a sample to play with, and I figured it'd be a good uh, experiment to run and show you guys, um, hopefully, getting some high grade precious metals um, from our smelting stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to run a little test, a uh, 100 gram sample of this. I'll use some lead collector and make sure I got the chemistry right. And then we'll do a little bit bigger smelt um, in a number 10 crucible and see what we can recover. And here's our sample all mixed up. We've got 100 grams of concentrates, 100 grams of anhydrous borax, 100 grams of lye, and 50 grams of silica sand, which is kind of our standard flux. We're going to run this as a test. I'm going to add uh, about 20 grams of lead to this as a collector metal. I'm also going to add iron as a reducing agent. And we'll see how it goes. And if we get a little bit of mat, um, I will end up adding uh, a little bit more lye because the more basic your flux is, the more uh, iron sulfide it can hold. All right, guys, here's the crucible I've been using, and this is a super salamander uh, graphite crucible. It's a number four, and as you can see, this thing is about done. Um, I've got two holes in the side, um, and I have put this thing through the ringer, man. I've done all kinds of crazy flux stuff in here. Um, on one of them, I did pure sodium hydroxide. Um, so I have not been very kind to this crucible. But a lot of you guys are asking, how much does it cost? You know, what's the cost of the smelting stuff and is it worth it? Um, this crucible here costs $23 and I've been keeping tabs on how many smelts I've done in it and I've done 20 smelts in it. So it ends up being about a dollar a smelt. The flux material is way less than a dollar for a smelt um, of this size. And then the gas, I get probably six to eight, maybe even 10 smelts out of one tank of gas. And it cost me 10 bucks to fill up the, the tank. So again, you're looking at, you're looking at maybe two, three, four dollars a smelt. Um, so that's, that's kind of the cost range for you. And hopefully that helps some of you guys out there who are thinking about getting into this or looking at uh, doing some smelting on your own. It, it really doesn't cost very much once you get up and into production. All right, guys, we just knocked our pyramid out of our cone mold. Let's see what we got here for. So there's our little lead button. But as you can see, we got a whole bunch of mat in there still. So our recipe wasn't quite basic enough. So I'm going to redo this one and end up adding more lye. I'm going to end up adding um, 200 grams instead of just 100 grams and see if we can get rid of this mat. And then here for comparison is a brand new one. So this is, uh, this is one of these salamander super crucibles. And so I'm going to put this in the furnace. Uh, the furnace is warm. I'm going to warm this thing up before I get it fired and add some stuff to dry it out, get it heated up um, so it doesn't crack um, or fail because of any moisture um, in the crucible. Now here's our second smelt with 200 grams of lye. Try and make it a little bit more basic. And there's our lead button. And it's quite a bit smaller because I just reused the 10 grams of lead that came out of the first one. I just dunked it back in here. Um, so that's why we don't have as much lead. And here's a little bit better angle. You can see right where the lead button was and right underneath it's all glassy slag. So making our charge more basic. We got rid of our mat recovered our lead let's weigh it i think i put in about 10 grams and uh, so now we got the right recipe so now i'm going to do a big smelt and see uh how much we can recover okay so now we're going to upgrade we're going to go up to a number 10 crucible 
And with this one, I can add some more material. So I'm going to add 300 grams of sulfides, 600 grams of lye, 300 grams of borax, and 150 grams of silica. All right, there's our charge in there. I've added 20 grams of lead as a collector again. And you can see the iron rod sticking out of there. There's actually two in there. Um, and so we'll get it fired up, get her smelting away, and hopefully we get a nice clean lead button and no mat and glossy slag. All right, we got our stuff cooled down from our uh, number 10 crucible. Oh, there's our lead button still in there. But uh, you can see there's no mat, so that worked out really pretty nicely. Let me knock that lead out of there, and we'll get her weighed. All right, guys, here's our lead button, and I've got it kind of hammered down, knocked the slag off. Um, and here's what I did. So I took the 10 grams that we had left over from our first two smelts, and I added another 10 grams to it, so I put 20 grams in, but look at how much we ended up coming out with, 37 grams. So we gained about 17 grams. Um, so hopefully some of that's precious metals. Um, I'm expecting there might be some of that as base metals that we reduced out with our iron rod. Um, but man, if we could get 15 grams of precious metals out of that, that would be awesome. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our lead button, I'm going to put it in this cupel, and we're going to heat it up in our electric furnace to about 1750 degrees. We're going to oxidize the lead out of there. As the lead oxidizes, it's going to pool on top of the liquid lead button, and it's going to shed off and get absorbed by this cupel, and the lead is going to refine the gold as it does that. So some base metals and, and other stuff is going to come up with the lead. It'll all go into this uh, cupel by oxidizing and the gold and the silver uh, won't oxidize even at those high temperatures and so what we'll be left over with is a pure precious metal button with gold and silver. Let's take a little look at our button here. Let's see how we're coming along. And there. Whoa, holy cow! Look at the size of that button! Whoa, let me uh, let me get it pulled out of there. We'll take a look. Wow, look at that thing, it's huge! It's still, uh, still obviously quite hot. Um, now it looks like there's some silver in there because it's, uh, it's not gold colored, but uh, let me get it cooled off and we'll take a look and get it weighed. Man, that is huge. All right guys, here's our, here's our bead. And man, I still can't get over how big it is. Um, let's put it on the scale here. 14, almost 15 grams. Wow, that is amazing. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, I used the, the lead from the first two, so we did 100 grams twice, so that's 200 grams, and then in the number 10 crucible, I did 300 grams. So this is the precious metals from about 500 grams worth of those uh, concentrates, and that's really amazing. That's, that's almost 3% uh, precious metals by weight. All right, guys, now we're going to do our kind of goofy but effective um, underwater weight method. So I got my uh, little jug of water here on the scale. I'm going to tear it. So now we're at zero. I'm going to take this little aluminum wire, submerge it in the water, tear it again. And then I'm going to take our little precious metal bead. Now the scale is going to go negative. Because I'm taking out the aluminum wire and some water. But when we put it back in, 
we end up with 1.03 grams. So that is the weight of the water that our bead displaces. All right, so here's our quick math. We got the weight of the bead and the weight of the water displaced. When you divide those two, you get the, the density of the bead. Um, but really what it tells you is uh, how much more dense your object is than water. So our object is 14.42 times the density of water. But since water is just one gram per cubic centimeter, that works out to be a density of 14.42 grams per cubic centimeter. So Archimedes had it really figured out. That's pretty cool. All right, so after doing our math, we can check out a chart online that tells us the carat of gold by density. And this turns out to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 carat, um, which is right around two thirds uh, gold by weight. And it might be hard to tell in the video, but the thing actually does have a little bit of yellow tint to it. Um, so that was going to be my guess. My guess was going to be somewhere between 60 and 70% gold. Now let's take our bead and see if I can go get it zapped with our XRF and see if I can get a, a percent gold and silver by weight uh, with the XRF gun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is by far the richest concentrates that I've ever seen. So that just goes to show you that uh, you probably don't want to throw out your black sand concentrates until you get them tested or smelted or assayed um, to make sure you're not throwing out gold. Because um, I actually did a little test pan with that stuff right when I got it, and I couldn't pan out any gold or silver. Uh, but it turns out it was about 3% precious metals by weight. If you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below or leave a comment in the comment section. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.